and welcome to Primetime Watchmaking in the News, your monthly video show summarizing what happened on the watchmaking planet. And as you can expect, March has been largely dominated by Basel World, the world's biggest watch show. But here we go for this edition's summary. Record views for the Watches TV, watchmaking road trip, final candidates, new saga dedicated to calendar watches, new exceptional timepiece by Vacheron Constantin, behind the scene of the world exclusive with Bugatti, the notion of time for racing drivers, Formula One and watchmakers, the tourbillon gate, and an example of bad taste. We covered Basel World quite extensively, but before going any further, I have to admit that we slightly messed up on one little thing and couldn't cover Patek Philippe's new product, but we will hopefully redeem ourselves and do a special on this in the near, near future. So this is no excuse, but you have to realize that we're quite a small team and we did our best and hopefully we will be more next year on site for these exceptional occasions. Nevertheless, we really want to thank all of you watching us because March has been a record month and for the first time we crossed a pretty cool milestone with more than 500,000 video views in one month and now you are more than 32,000 subscribed to our channel. This really makes us super happy, super proud and enthusiastic for the future as we have still a lot of interesting and cool ideas regarding contents. I also quickly wanted to let you know that we've come up with our final selection of candidates for our fantastic watchmaking road trip. They can start packing and be in Geneva during the first week of July and we'll keep you informed as we go along. And finally, just wanted to announce that we will soon uh, air our new five episode saga, this time dedicated to the calendar function of watches, so stay tuned on this one. I'll come back on some interesting and funny side stories about Basel World in a few moments. But before, let's talk about another product launch that didn't happen in Basel. Yes, the world doesn't uh, stop there. And we've just seen a spectacular new timepiece released by Vacheron Constantin and in the wake of the most complicated watch ever produced and presented during the fall of last year, the reference 57 260 with its incredible 57 complication, the same team of three watchmakers worked on an exclusive and unique timepiece called the Maître Cavignotier Retrograde Armillary Tourbillon reference 91990. This watch integrates two complications directly imported from the superwatch, the Armillary Tourbillon, named so as a reminder of astronomical armillary spheres with a two-axis tourbillon and very importantly its spherical balance spring, something quite rare to see and uh, to master and Vacheron is adamant about this watch precision having apparently overpassed all cost certification requirements. The second complication has got to do with how time is displayed with a double instant hour and minute retrograde system seen on the right part of the dial. This watch comes in a 45.7 millimeter white gold case and though it's a unique timepiece I wouldn't be too surprised to see this spectacular tourbillon cage in other models of the brand. I really think that the simple fact that it forms the Vacheron logo with the Maltese cross every 15 seconds is something cool enough to imagine this elsewhere and by the way you can also see this animated logo on the side of the watch with a small sapphire opening at 9 o'clock. So a very beautiful achievement by Vacheron with nevertheless a little contemporary feel to it in terms of design. One interesting feature of this watch is for man wearing shirts. You'll be able to see quite easily the time without revealing necessarily the full complication of this watch. To make a parallel, it's similar to the MBNF that I'm wearing today where you can see your main time zone, but then you need to pull your shirt slightly to discover the second time zone. So let's now go back on some other type of stories because something rather amusing happened to us and we can say that some of you have seen a world exclusive on the watches TV. I don't know if you remember, but just a couple of days before Basel World, we talked about the partnership between Parmigiani Fleurier and the world's most exclusive supercar maker, Bugatti. Well, we had this opportunity because Bugatti had just revealed to the world its new Chiron spaceship car at the Geneva Motor Show. And on the way back to Molsheim, Bugatti's headquarters in the French Alsace, they stopped by Fleurier to show the car to the Parmigiani team that is currently working on the next uh, superwatch that will go along with this car. Anyhow, and to make things a little bit more exciting for our video coverage, we kindly asked the guy from Bugatti if he could do a little run with it on a closed parking lot. And this is where the trouble started for us, because basically there has not been a single video sequence of this car moving anywhere in the world. Bugatti is reserving this for a mega launch event later this year. So Bugatti politely asked us to remove the video, and with the idea of having to test this supercar and its designated watch, well, we kindly, or one can say strategically, abided and temporarily removed the video. But you were already more than 12,000 having viewed this video in less than 48 hours, so you see always something exciting on the watch's TV. 
And let's remain a bit in the world of cars with some side stories of Basel. And let's first start with Rebellion, who is, as we showed you in previous reports, like a two-sided coins with its extreme timepieces on one side and its very own racing outfit on the other side. They are not sponsor of a team, it's really their very own team and are, for instance, the only private team participating at the LMP1 Endurance Championship against little manufacturers like Audi, Porsche and Toyota. So this year they wanted to have their pilots push themselves their racing car through the streets of Basel in order to put it on display by the main hall. And uh, well, that wasn't really allowed by the very inspired authorities, but anyhow it allowed me to get some quick interviews with some of their pilots and talk about their vision of time and what parallels can they make between extreme sports cars and creative watchmaking. What parallels can you make between uh, car racing and watchmaking? Well, we need a lot of precision as racing drivers, but also for the technique uh, to build a car. And of course, this is the same uh, in watches. That's probably the most easy one. In the recent years, we've seen some very, very complicated uh, systems uh, on watches. Uh, cars are also seeking new technologies. And uh, I think it's really two worlds with, with that are really very connected. We're always trying to be the quickest possible. So it's all to do with time. Time is something that rules all of us. Uh, we cannot hide away from it. and. In car racing we try to find each little tenths and hundredths uh, of a second and I enjoy that since I'm very small. When we do a corner and we're not perfect, you can feel easily that one tenth of a second you, you lost it easily. With the start of the Formula One season and this year's very important presence of watch brands in what is called the pinnacle of motorsport, we had to come back on something Mr. Beaver told us at Baselworld. We know about his incredible capacity of occupying the media scene, him and all the brand he takes care of, but with the renaming of the Red Bull team as the Red Bull Tag Heuer Formula One team, and if you listen to his intervention during our Baselworld coverage, it's as if Tag Heuer had actually built the engine that goes into that car. So let's not get too carried away with this, it's just the rebadged Renault engine, which helps everyone in terms of PR after last year's public clash between Red Bull and Renault. But again, just a demonstration that if you want your brand's name out there, then you might as well go all the way. And this has been a pretty smart move by one of the most successful and influential men in watchmaking. And on a personal note, I used to really like the sport uh, a lot actually, but Formula One has got rather boring over the last few years. I still think, uh, I still like all the technical dimensions of it and hopefully we'll get back on track, but we'll see. I have a few doubts about that, uh, even though we saw some uh, pretty nice surprises, for instance, with the outstanding performance of the new US team Haas, meaning that there is always space for strong and clever newcomers. But let's stay with uh, Mr. Beaver and uh, what we've called the Tourbillon Gate, because he created some kind of major uproar with some uh, other brands with the introduction of the Tiger Tourbillon watch, in particular with Patek Philippe's president, Mr. Thierry Stern, who talked quite loudly about this in the Swiss media, even mentioning that it was killing the Tourbillon. But the funny thing is that that watch has been announced almost a year ago uh, with this aggressive pricing. It was presented in February, and it's only when the news really hits the, the, the spotlight that it created such a fuss. So we'll follow this quite closely, but I'm sure we haven't seen the end of it. And finally, just want to share something demonstrating, unfortunately, and yet again, human imbecility with the private security detail of a watch brand that didn't find a, a better idea on almost the following day of the terrible terrorist attack of Brussels to stage a false bomb alarm in Basel world to check if official security was doing its job. Well, obviously, it created some serious confusion, but no harm. But this is just an example of bad taste, and we don't know which brand it is, but I guess it will be probably a bit difficult for them to deal any discounts or even its present for next year's at Basel World. So this is it for this edition of Primetime. Remember our new saga dedicated to calendar watches, and this will be aired uh, very shortly. And we'll have some other cool reports coming along the entire uh, month of April. So thank you so much for your support. Thanks for your numerous comments and the cool interactions between us. All the best and see you soon.